So you're in the middle of a safari. Not a safari in terms of going to Africa, even though that would be fun. Um, you're in the middle of a trumpet safari, and you're trying to figure out, is this the one? And trust me, as you are well aware, if you are a fan of this channel, you've seen me buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell. I always, though, come back to this horn, this particular horn. This is one of my earlier Copernicus model trumpets. And why is it the one? You know, I feel like Neo needs to be flying in right here, but stay tuned to this video. I'm going to tell you some things that are very particular for me over thousands of horn purchases that have really cemented why this particular horn is the one. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you are having a great 2023. Hard to believe. Um, this is a new mini lesson. Oh my goodness, it's been a while since I've had a chance to do these. Thank you so much for keeping us so very busy at the shop. And we are looking forward to working with you to help you find the one. Now, this was actually a suggestion from one of our good customers who said, how do you know? How do you know? And while it's multifaceted, uh, I'm going to just run through some basic points that I feel that are super important and what I feel why this particular one, this particular model of Copernicus is the horn that fits me the best. So first and foremost, people always say go for the sound. And I'm going to say for the most part, yes. For instance, like if you're looking for like that really thick, rich, creamy sound, you're not going to want to play a Calicchio or you're not going to want to play one of the new Yamaha trumpets who are very crisp, clean and, and bright. Um, so, yes, but I'm going to tell you that's not my number one uh, factor when it comes to finding the trumpet or trombone or whatever instrument you're playing that works best for me. And the number one thing is the clarity of the attack. The clarity of the attack. I, I'm i gonna just demonstrate a little bit here why I love Copernicus so much. Now those are all breath attacks. And so when I'm testing a horn and I'm looking for how responsive the instrument is, I do a breath attack because I feel like that eliminates all the variables in my own personal playing that can get in the way. So clarity of attack, because if the instrument doesn't want to articulate, it doesn't want to speak quickly, even with a wide flare, double shepherd's crook, copper plate, all the things that might move it towards a darker spectrum, which this horn obviously is, it has to speak cleanly. It has to speak clearly. And if it doesn't and you're working really hard getting it to like engage, that's not the horn for you. Now, it could be a mouthpiece combination. Uh, that's one of the reasons our shop exists, so we can really dial in a great combination for any customer who's looking. So if you always, if you have questions on that, you know, call us, reach out to us. We're always here for you. Um, so that's number one. That is absolutely number one. Number two for me is how it feels in my hand. Like I said, you say, wait, 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 sound. I make the sound. And, and people go, oh, you sound great on everything. Well, this horn, I sound very different on than, say, my Adams A1 or my French Besson from 1940. Yes, sound, of course. But number two... It has to feel like it's part of part of me. If the horn's too heavy, I don't like it. If it's the horn's too light, I don't like it. I love the balance of this horn. This horn, for me, just fits. Fits. So when I'm picking it up, I don't feel like it's a, it's a tube. I feel like it's a part of my body. So that's super important for me. Number three, the mechanics of the instrument. 
Uh, for years, I played other instruments that sounded amazing, but I really didn't like the valves, or I didn't like the slides, or I didn't like the, you know, the, the ergonomics of the horn in terms of the mechanical parts of the instrument. This, yes, I'm very lucky I got to design this horn with our friends at Adams Brass, um, but I will say that fits so well. The valves, the valves on a horn, folks, and a lot of people will come to the shop and they go, I don't necessarily like the Adams valves because they're a little spongy. They want something more tactile and and and, and firm. Totally cool. Um, there's not a perfect valve set for, for manufacturing. You might dig Shilky valves, you might dig Yamaha valves, you might dig Shires valves or Bach valves. Cool. But if that is something that you are really like keen about, then do that. Besides the Adams, the second favorite valve block I have is the Getson block. That's why I like that X Edwards X13 so much. And this is so important. We're doing this all the time. So that's a, a big thing. Next up is that the way it centers, the way, the feel of the resistance when you're playing. Do you feel like it's too open? Do you feel like it's too closed? How do you check that out? Well, it's simple. You, I like playing very soft because I can feel where the horn wants to go in the partials. I'll give you a quick demonstration. heard me bending and being really loose like going to like the GEC open and doing some of the scalar or things I'm what I'm trying to do is find where this horn wants to respond and once I can do that then I can feel like where the resistance profile is it's it's, it's funny because I get tempted I mean it's very easy to get tempted in this shop we have hundreds of amazing instruments in stock and then when I go back to this is I want to say this is one. It was like the third Copernicus I got. I kept on selling my Copernicus trumpets um, because I only had one at the time in the shop. Um, now we have a few in stock, so I don't have to sell them. And so this is one of the older ones. Um, and like I said, it just it seems like to really fit me even more than uh, the upturned Copernicus model. Um, but th it's partially due to the fact that I could just manipulate the horn uh, in terms of the way it responds. So that's huge for me. The next big thing is the variety of sound shapes. I think that's, for me as an improviser, I want something that's wide, I want something that's bright, I want something that's super thick. Um, this horn will do it all. Yes, could I pick up, um, like I have a couple horns for future videos today, could I pick up this old Super? It's an awesome trumpet. It's a great trumpet. Um, the difference is I don't really like the valves and it's a little bright for me. Could totally play this and nobody would say anything like against it. The people uh, in the KCJL are so sweet because I always bring in different horns and they always go, yeah, you're fine. You sound fine. Again, you have to find something that, yes, the player makes the horns work, but you have to find something that when you grab it, you know, I know that I have no, I have nothing I can complain about with this horn. Nothing. Um, well, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. No, I don't do that. So, super important. It's, it's so great because, I, like I said, I woke up this morning, early this morning, to get my practicing in. I had like three or four, you know, I have a few horns at home. This is the horn I, I go to. I know that the first note, and I just started that first note, and I was like, okay feels like home. So part of this whole discussion we're talking about is trying to find the opportunities to play a lot of different horns so you can feel some of these differences. Maybe have your private instructor do that. Maybe get together with some other brass playing friends, play horns, listen, you know, sort of collaborate back and forth to feel and, and really, you know, you know, dig a little bit deeper into this than just, this sounds good. Great, sound is, obviously, sound is the most important, 
But after that, after you get that first level, what's next? So uh, I know that people have asked me this question many times and I don't think I've ever done a video on it. So I wanted to take a few moments and talk about this. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comments here online. And uh, thanks again for all you do. Hit that subscribe button if you made it this far, congratulations. And uh, we'll see you down the road soon. Keep on keeping on. Cheers.